After the emotionally draining epic that was Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home swung into theaters to offer some sweet relief to the legions of Marvel fans looking for a superhero fix with slightly smaller stakes. Far From Home delivered all the heart, thrills, and goofiness we've come to expect since Tom Holland took over the spandex in 2016's Captain America Civil War. But there are a lot of little touches in Far From Home you probably missed. A mighty Earth elemental wreaks some serious havoc in Mexico during the cold opening of Far From Home, so we don't blame you if you didn't catch the super nerdy clue the filmmakers briefly put on screen to herald its arrival. A license plate with only 463 visible appears briefly near Nick Fury and Maria Hill when the elemental pops up. This is likely a nod to Amazing Spider-Man No. 4 from September 1963, the issue that introduced the world to the Earth-based villain Sandman. Sound like a stretch? Well, Marvel already snuck a few license plate-based Easter eggs into the Far From Home trailers that didn't make the theatrical cut of the film. Before the water elemental attack is teased in the first official teaser trailer from January 2019, for example, there was a boat in the background with ASM-212 on the side. It's almost certainly a reference to Amazing Spider-Man No. 212, the issue that introduced Spidey's wet threat, Hydro-Man. Flash Thompson even tells his classmates about a guy who got water powers named Morris Bench that he read about on the internet. Another clear reference to the comic book alter ego of Hydro-Man. But that's not all. In a London-based clip seen in the official trailer from May 2019, a car with the license plate 2865 SEP appears. This probably refers to Amazing Spider-Man No. 28 from September 1965, which marked the debut of fire villain Molten Man. This particular UK plate was cut from the final film, but a similar plate number pops up in Prague in the theatrical cut, ASM 28965, for issue number 28, September 1965. There's also at least one other license plate-based Easter egg in Far From Home that has nothing to do with the elementals. MTU 83779, spotted on Nick Fury's license plate in Berlin. It may look like just another random string of letters and numbers, but we're guessing it's a reference to Marvel Team-Up No. 83 from July 1979, which featured a team-up between Spider-Man and Fury. The story of MTU No. 83 begins, or so the text tells us, with a murdered Spider-Man on a Manhattan rooftop. But wait! He awakens and begins to remember the events of the night before, which culminated in Nick Fury shooting Spider-Man and a woman who appeared to be Black Widow with an anesthetic bullet. In other words, he used non-lethal ammo that appeared real. So, like in the events of the Berlin sequence of Far From Home, MTU No. 83 features Fury seemingly at odds with our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. In Far From Home, fake Nick Fury is an illusion used to trick and incapacitate Spider-Man. In MTU No. 83, Nick Fury's fake bullets are an illusion used to trick and incapacitate Spider-Man. Neat! The rest of the plot of MTU No. 83, which involves Silver Samurai and the teleportation ring he obtained from Saturday Night Live's John Belushi, is probably irrelevant. It does, however, feature a seemingly dead Black Widow appearing alive and well in a S.H.I.E.L.D. lab. But we're not even touching that one. To test his newfound powers in his 1962 Amazing Fantasy No. 15 debut, Peter Parker takes on a muscle-bound wrestler named Crusher Hogan, who promises $100 to anyone who can stay in the ring with him for three minutes. Our Spider-Man in the making, of course, easily bests Hogan, and variations on this origin story have popped up several times since. After Aunt May's homeless support fundraiser in Far From Home, if you look closely behind Happy, you'll see a Crusher Hogan poster with that same $100 offer. There's also a ring bell nearby, so it looks like this building is where Crusher made the offer. We never got to see the MCU's Peter Parker take Crusher down, but this poster is a decent consolation prize and confirmation that MCU Spidey likely had a similar origin story as his comics counterpart. Benjamin Franklin Parker, a.k.a. Orphan Peter's father figure Uncle Ben, has yet to appear in the MCU, but his memory looms large. In the original Amazing Fantasy No. 15 origin story, Uncle Ben is killed by an unnamed burglar, the same burglar Peter could have apprehended following a TV appearance had he not been so caught up in his newfound fame. Peter later tracks the burglar to a warehouse where he captures him and leaves him for the police to deal with. 
Peter realizes in the final panel, famously, that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Spider-Man Homecoming writer John Francis Daly told Entertainment Weekly in 2017 that Uncle Ben was almost referenced directly in the MCU, but plans changed. It was when Peter was getting ready for Homecoming, and the wardrobe Aunt May was giving Peter was all Uncle Ben's clothes. It was a nice moment, but we also knew that it veered away from his arc. If you're going to talk about someone's death, you don't want it to be a throwaway. In Far From Home, it's revealed that Peter is using Ben's old luggage, but the connection goes unmentioned on screen. If you look closely, the monogram BFP is featured on the suitcase in the scene where Peter is packing for his summer vacation. Blink and you'll miss it, but the giant novelty check Happy Hogan carries into the back room after the homeless support fundraiser in Far From Home is signed by Pepper Potts. Potts is listed here as the co-founder and chair of the Stark Relief Foundation, which probably sounds familiar if you've rewatched Avengers Age of Ultron recently. The Stark Relief Foundation? Already on the scene. In Age of Ultron, Tony Stark asks Maria Hill about the Stark Relief Foundation following the so-called Duel of Johannesburg, in which a spellbound Hulk and a Hulkbuster-suited Tony Stark caused massive collateral damage to South Africa's largest city. The Foundation's purpose, it appears, is to provide aid to populations impacted by the messy work the Avengers have historically engaged in. In Far From Home, viewers can assume that Pepper has donated such a large sum to help the homeless population of Queens recovering after the blip. The brief but welcome return of Daily Bugle head honcho J. Jonah Jameson, played once again by J.K. Simmons, is one of the many highlights of Far From Home, coming during the mid credit sequence, which appears to set up the next MCU Spider-Man flick. Simmons played the cantankerous journalist in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, but Far From Home's incarnation is a little bit different. Thrown in the towel! Abandoned his sad little masquerade! <laughs> In Far From Home, Jameson is more unstable than ever, and his desire to smear Spider-Man is cranked up to 11. Befitting of the times, The Daily Bugle now appears to be an online conspiracy-mongering tabloid news program, clearly styled to resemble The O'Reilly Factor or even the MCU's version of InfoWars. This darker take on Jameson then outs Spider-Man as Peter Parker, leading Parker in Far From Home's final line to echo the final interrupted line of homecoming uttered by Aunt May when she discovers Peter's secret. What the f Considering that ex-Stark Industries scientist-turned-Mysterio lackey William Ginter Riva preserved Mysterio's high-tech handiwork for later use, meaning even more crazily realistic illusions could be on the way in Far From Home's follow-up, having a paranoid conspiracy monger like Jonah eager to smear a now-outed Peter Parker is a recipe for disaster. WTF, indeed. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about the MCU are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.